Thanks so much for joining us. Um, welcome to Redbird Landscape Design. Great that you're here. Coming on live today to show you and discuss with you the really nasty cold weather we're going to get in North Florida, specifically even the south. Uh, I got to be honest with you, when I first saw the, the, uh, the forecast, I was doing my best not to freak out. And I know a lot of other people are. Um, because, let me see, make sure I got this right. Uh, here in North Florida, we're expecting, let's see, this Friday the 23rd, we're going down to 26. Um, the 24th, the next day Saturday, our high will be 42, going down to 24. Uh, Sunday night, the 25th, Christmas Day, is high of 45 and going down to 30. And even going further, Monday night, thankfully it's going to warm up more during the day. It'll be 50 and then going down to 32. So we have several nights there that are going to be dicey. Um, it's I haven't had the chance to really look up and, and see what our local news stations are saying. If we're going to have like sustained long temperatures, long uh, freezing temperatures, so like Friday, for example, we're going down to 26. So if if that ends up being, oh man, so 45 for the high. Let's hope that maybe one o'clock in the morning to maybe four or five, we're gonna have that 26 below freezing temperatures. It's the sustained long time frame of fro freezing temperatures that's gonna be the issue. Um, all you can do is try and prepare. That's why I'm doing the live today because we're a few days out still. Um, fortunately, I was able to go out and pick up a few more items. Uh, as far as taking care of your plants, let me just start this here. So number one thing you want to do, it's scrolling down at the bottom there, water your plants. A lot of think, people think that's counterintuitive. I'm like, you're right, it does sound weird. But what water does, it insulates the plant, the plant roots. So if you have a root system that's dry because we're in December and maybe haven't watered much and let the rain take care of it, right? We haven't had enough rain in North Florida to sustain plants well enough to get through a freeze. So your root system might be halfway um, turgid, like holding on enough water. If it's anything less than that, it's probably not going to do well through this freeze. Uh, dry roots cannot, don't have the ability to absorb moisture. When they're shriveled up, they're closed up, right? It's, there's little um, pores in, in, the, in, the, in the root system that will absorb moisture. And when they dry, they close up. And once they get to the point of no return, so to speak, they can't open up again and they can't grab that moisture. So that portion of that root system is gonna desiccate or die. It will not get through a, uh, a really cold freeze. So water in your plants. Uh, you wanna take your hose, not necessarily, don't spray them at the top. I have other videos and shorts on my, my um, YouTube page here, Redbird Landscape Design LLC. Um, so you take the end of your hose in this situation, I would go right down to the base of the plant if they're in the ground soak it. I usually count one, two, three, four, five, maybe up to ten. Go to your next plant. Maybe it's beside it. Do the same thing. Count slowly. Go back to the first thing, first plant. Water in deeply. That's a great trick of how to know that you've really given it a good soak. This will, I swear to you, will help plants come through and hopefully get through this this really nasty cold snap we're going to have. Uh, it's super unfortunate. There's Other than preparing, that's all we can do. And I hate to say it, but yeah, we're probably going to lose some plants. Uh, if you have a lot of tropicals, it's going to be a challenge for you. Um, so let's go on to the next point because I'm going to get all scattered here. There's so much to talk about. So the next big thing you can do, ticker taping down there at the bottom here, where are you? Over here. Mulch. So you still have time. You can go get some bag mulch. Three to six inches. Um, when it gets really cold, you can do even more. Uh, you just don't want... Mulch is great. It, it suppresses weeds. It keeps... It retains moisture. It holds the moisture in at the base of the plant. And then um, you don't want to have it 
mashed up, let's say this is the stem of your plant, you don't want to do this. You don't want it jammed up against it. You want to give three inches or so, about three inches, away from the base of the plant. Mulch against the root or the stem of the, the bark of a plant or the trunk of a plant will create in that little space there a rot situation because that stem won't be able to get air circulation around it and let it, it can't dry. It won't be able to dry out. Um, and you, you have a rot at the base of the plant like that, you'll lose it eventually over time. Hopefully not, but keep the mulch away from the base of the plant. That's how to do that. So water in really well, mulch in really well. Um, back up a step here. When can you start doing that? What did I say? It's going to be, looking at my cell phone here. Uh, I'll get in my glasses. See what happens when you get older. <laughs> uh, next 10 days. What did I say? Um, so good time to start. I've been watering off and on for the last few days. It just helps the ground around. In Florida, we have such sandy soil and water tends to go right through it, right? So I try and get ahead of it earlier. So Friday's your really cold day. Today's Tuesday, right? Um, yeah. So you got a couple days. I would say definitely Thursday. I know we have 20% chance of rain here. Today there's rain possible. Tomorrow, uh, Wednesday's about 30% chance. North Florida, that's hit and miss. You might, you might not. Um, so I would say definitely if you've got a lot, start tomorrow. Water in really well, like I, should, I mentioned. Down at the base of the plant, soak, soak, soak. Go to the next one, soak, soak, soak. Go back. Do a slow count. It helps a lot to know that you've definitely watered in well. Um, so yeah, I would definitely Thursday, definitely soak your plants Thursday. Okay. And then if you can get out to the stores and get mulch, mulch them in. Uh, you'll see a lot of people online. I just saw somebody saying that's what she was doing over the weekend. Cause she knew it was, yeah, we've had a big heads up, right? Several days of uh, a good timeline to be able to prepare. Um, so take, if you can go get some bag mulch get some more mulch down after you've watered in. It's easier that way. Um, what else was I going to say? Uh, uh, also, in the same vein of, um, of mulching, I have a couple vines. Uh, one's muscadine, muscadine, however you say it, and another table grape variety. I forget what. Um, and I bought those, one of them, from a company called Ison's Nursery in South Georgia excellent company if anybody's interested. They've got fantastic product and plants. I've never had a problem. But anyways, on their page, and I've received an email because I'm on their newsletter list, they are saying to actually put, I wrote this down, I don't want to say it wrong. Ison uh, said recommended mounding dirt 10 to inches, 10 to 12 inches more around the base of muscadine vines to get through this cold snap. Um, you can leave the dirt there until spring. A newly planted muscadine vines or, or vines that are in their first year in the ground, they're highly recommending. It's like a weather alert. And uh, Isons has been in business doing uh, vines and grape vines for, I think this is their third generation. So they know what they're talking about. So they are strongly suggesting 10 to 12 inches of dirt around the base and then remove it in the spring. And I can tell you, I'm gonna do that. My vines are, I think a year in the ground, maybe a little more. It's not gonna hurt them. It just adds another layer of protection to the root system. That's the goal with the watering, the mulch, and, um, and the soil now that I've told you. It helps the root system and the crown of the plant to survive through the cold. Um, so take a step further, you have your root system. Here's the ground root system down here. Then the growing uh, upper portion starts there, right up top. This part in the plant, that's the crown. That's where everything starts from, okay? So the crown roots down top growth. If this dies, that's a problem. It, it won't make it, right? So you wanna protect the crown. Uh, also, we'll go another step into this. So, what else did I say? Okay, so let's move on to covering your plants. A lot of people have different ways that they do that. I got a really funky hair today. <laughs> Anyways, so cover your plants. 
Um, you can use sheets. You can use, some people have said, put comforters on their stuff. If it's a heavier plant um, with heavier uh, branching structure, you can definitely uh, get away with that. You go, mulch is key, cover your plants. Yeah, try not to let it touch the plant. Um, what happens there is you, how do I say that? So you've got your plant and your coverings on top of it. At that connection point, what can happen is moisture can build up between the covering and the leaves, okay? And it's going to go past freezing. That moisture can and will freeze at that contact point. And then you're going to damage that plant. Potentially, that cold can draw, the plant can draw that cold in and that frozen capacity. Uh, if you think about it, we and plants are mostly made up of uh, moisture, water and it freezes. So you don't want to touch the plants with your covering if you can help it. Uh, other people have got really big, bigger established plants that can handle that. If you lose a few leaves, not a big deal. It won't, it won't hurt the plant. You won't lose it. That's our goal here is to try and not lose the plants, right? Um, just prepare, prepare, prepare. What else did I say? So what are you going to use? I have, I bought these. This is a burlap bag, got a hole in the bottom. And why use burlap? Because it's breathable. Can you see how it's weave, right? You can see my hand through there, right? See my thumb moving? So the air will pass through that and it helps circulate air. That's super duper important. Um, that way the plant can breathe through it and at least it's protecting from um, the really heavy uh, cold temperatures. And when you're watering in, you might lose your some top growth, which is probably going to happen. I've been in a tree out in the backyard. Uh, I've also done a video on that. I fully expect the top growth of big, wonderful banana leaves are going to brown up, die, and they're going to... You can't help that. Unless you build maybe... I haven't tried this. Just an idea. You could build a structure and out of wire or, um, I don't know, extra wood that you have and build a structure that you could go around it and then drape like a canopy over top of the banana if it's small enough. I have a Cavendish dwarf intentionally so that I can pick and maintain it so it's not a huge towering tree. If you have a huge towering tree banana, you're going to lose leaves. That's all there is to it. They can't handle those temperatures. They're a tropical plant, right? So tropicals need warm temps. Also, um, as far as banana goes, people are adding extra mulch at the base. Um, they're putting extra layers of mulch and leaves down around the base of the, their bananas. Some people wrap the trunk of the banana. Um, that's all you can do. Uh, wrapping also uh, the trunk. I've seen online. I haven't done this, but some people have take pool noodles, the long foam. I should have brought one in. I forgot. So a pool noodle that's made out of styrofoam or whatever it's made out of, they split it, not all the way through, just halfway. So you have, instead of a circle, you have a C. Then you have that little split spot and you can go boink, right over a trunk. Some people swear by it, it works. I haven't done it, it's an idea. Okay, so we did burlap. You can do sheets. A lot of people say, hey, let's use plastic. I wouldn't recommend it. Okay, uh, I'll tell you why. I had to write it down because there's lots of little bits of information. I want to make sure you folks get it. Um, do, do, do. Okay, um, if you're going to use plastic, it's really hard on the plant. It will transmit cold air to the plants, right? It's, it's kind of like a conduit. Um, it can cause more harm than good. Please use fabric cotton, burlap. I have another product I'm going to show you here that I just picked up. Um, row covers, they're made out of, they look like a tunnel. And then you put like a hoop type of thing over top, especially in your vegetable gardens. If you all have veg veggies still growing, like your greens, carrots, what else is growing right now? Uh, yeah, a lot of greens. They're going to fry. <laughs> you know, water them in really well too. Not on the top, down the bottom. And cover them. Uh, and hopefully, you know, you, you're kind of creating like a mini greenhouse. So try and stay away from plastic. 
If you're going to use plastic, don't let it touch the plant. And the next big thing, if you're using plastic, get it off of there in the morning when the sun's coming up. Because you will create, it'll do more harm than good. It'll be um, a, a cold, how do I explain that? It creates kind of like a greenhouse effect. And it will burn the plant. It will uh, contain that cold air right there. And you'll smother the plant because plastic doesn't breathe. Like I showed you with the burlap and cotton sheets breathe. Plastic doesn't breathe, right? So backing up on covering the plants. Let's see what else. Okay. So when you're putting a blanket or a sheet, you go all the way down to the ground. Secure it if you can. Uh, last year we had cold snap and a little bit of wind. And dang it all, the breeze just enough went flip and lifted up some of my coverings. So some stuff got burnt where it didn't get protected. So what I've done is I use um, good old fashioned, grew up like this, thanks mom, uh, clothespins. And I put stakes or sticks in the ground just to secure it, bricks around. Again, make a bit of a canopy so you're not touching your, your leaves. And use clothespins and you just pinch them, right? And it holds it, secures it. Easy, dollar store item, doesn't cost a lot, right? A lot of people are like, oh my God, I've got so many plants and I'm going to spend thousands of dollars trying to cover them. You don't have to go that way. So, and also being Christmas week, it makes it hard because um, if you're going to buy something online, it's going to take a bit to get it. And you may not have a whole lot of time. And that's why I'm doing the live now. So also, next thing that you can use, there's a ton of stuff out there, frost blankets, garden blankets. If you search, there's a billion different things. I purchased something called, where's my paper? It's called a blanket. P-L-A-N-K-E-T. Planket. Okay. Frost protection. I got it at a big box store. I'm not affiliate, so I won't tell you which one. <laughs> uh, see, it's for frost, sleet, snow, wind. And just this one that I have has a chinch or a, um, what do you call those? A tie down at the bottom. And you can seal it or like uh, pull it together. And then this one's 10 feet around. They have six and eight feet. I have pictures of that for y'all to see. Once I figure out where I put it, I'm using a different software. Where did I put those? That's a good question. Present slides. Ah, here we are. So here's one. Now those are tubes and I bought one of these. I know they're not cheap, $36 um, at a big box store. This is six feet, it's right here, six feet long, okay? 50 feet, six feet wide, sorry, 50 feet long. And I bought it because then I can cut it to size on my sensitive plants. What are those? I had a couple people ask me this already. I have a bougainvillea. Those are a tropical, semi-tropical plant. Last year when we had our cold snap, they got a little burned around the edges, but it was not a long lengthy snow cat, snow, blah, cold snap. So I'm thinking, how long is it going to last? It's going to be for several nights in a row. It's going to stress the heck out of the plants. So I, I bought this covering. Let me see. I have Bird of Paradise. They should be okay, but they did get burned a little bit. I'm going to cover those. Uh, Bougainvillea Hawaiian Ties. They're a tall plant. Um, purpley pinkies beautiful easy plant to put in the yard I've had a lot of I've done several videos on them uh, they will burn and fry period I'm not gonna snow sugarcoat it they will and last year mine got fried to the ground um, but the trunk of it didn't die and I just cut it back and and made more I did a lot of cuttings off of it so I'm gonna move on here and that's a whole nother story and there is a video up on my page to show you um, where did my slides go present okay and then so there's that one and then there's other things that you can buy that you can do a plant protector this one here see it's 10 feet around I bought this one because I have let me think an angel trumpet I also have another video that's a tropical. It's not going to get through this cold snap. No. Um, so you have to cover that. 
I have a mulberry that's new in the ground that's right there. There's another plant right there that's kind of semi-tropical. I forget what it is, but they're all closer together. And here's the that planket that you have on the, and it's 10 feet around. Here's the chinch. It's, it's seamed, sewn into the bottom. So it's like a hoodie. You'll pull it, gather it, and secure it, right? Then what you do with it, put bricks or something around it so it doesn't lift up over your plant. And then also make some kind of a canopy structure so you don't touch the plant itself. This is made out of, it's like a, a fabric. You can see right through it, right? And it, it's breathable. I believe it's like a cotton poly blend of some kind. And it's going to work like a charm. You can put those over your vegetable veggies, any plant that needs coverings, okay? Uh, what else? So I said, all right, so you, what plants you're going to cover are any that are sensitive, any tropical plants. Um, bananas are tropical, bougainvilleas are tropical. I have a plant I just bought a couple days ago. I love it. I'm not addicted at all. <laughs> but this is Tupacina, right? Let me move this so you guys can see it better. Okay, this guy <coughs> excuse me, is a tropical. It's in a pot. It's going to stay in my garage on a piece of cardboard. Cement will pull the, more, the heat out of a human body and a plant pot. Um, also will be watered in really well to get through it because the garage isn't heated. But at least it's semi-protected, right? Um, bring your pots in, water those things in, check them. Because this time of year, snakes are looking for a place to move to stay warm through our winter months in the south in Florida. Um, lizards, they're going to burrow in there too. You might bring a friend in the house if you bring them in your house. Okay, so just check them, water your pots in, bring your pots in. Um, if you can't do that, you have a covered porch, put a piece of cardboard, something down so the pots don't, uh, the cement won't draw the warmth out of the pot. If you have a south-facing wall, that will help too. Um, when the sun comes up, and I believe we're supposed to have sunny days too, that'll help. At least the temperatures. Brick, especially, will warm up a stone. And that side of the house stays warm, and it will re uh, radiate that warmth to the plants, and it'll help. So if, if you can, and when you put pots in, see there's so much, I'm constantly remembering. Um, and in the nursery industry, they'll go pot to pot, which is meaning you'll take... I'll show you here. Here's a pot, my water. Here's a measuring cup with my um, clothespins in it. So pot, pot, go pot to pot. Literally touch them, okay? It helps keep them warm. I know it sounds crazy, but it works. Been there, done that. Um, pot to pot, under a cover. Make sure your pots are watered in really well. Okay? Um... So, also, I'll show you one couple more things here. Uh, uh, uh. So, I showed you the 10 foot size um, blanket. This one is 6 feet. You can see right here, it's a 6 foot. And it is, I think it says 20. Sorry, my. Let's see. Yeah. So, here's the pots thing I told you. Check them before you bring them in. Many critters, okay? Uh, so there's your t six foot. These blankets come in various different sizes. I, I was at a orange bo big box store that had them. And there weren't a lot in my area. So probably be worth you checking online to make sure that you um, they're there. You don't waste your time. Here's another one. This is, uh, what do you call that? A tower, a structure where they had a whole display of them on there. Um, it's a, this I found in the plant section, the gardening section of the big box store. And they had several of them. But as you can see, that's for one six foot or ten foot. I mean, if you have plants that are close together and you want to canopy them, this would be a good option. Uh, what else do I have here? Plant protection. And then also, I showed you folks burlap, right? Uh, just a burlap bag. This is burlap um, rolls. It comes in several feet. I think it was 50 feet, about $14 or something like that. 
So those are the options of how to help protect your plants. Water them in well, mulch, there's still time to do those things. Um, water closer to the free freezing temperatures, not the day of, because you gotta remember your water lines may freeze, your hose may freeze. Once you're done watering, um, a nice trick is to take your hose, put it up above your head and drain the water out of that. Then disconnect your hose from the spigot, the spout that's at your the wall of your house and uh, drain the hose out as well. And let, if it's gonna be super cold, let that water do a real slow drip, 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 drip. It'll help your lines from not freezing up. Um, water lines should be covered in some kind of a, a foam insulation. There's specific ones out there that are for that. So you don't want a burst water line. That won't be fun. So let's go back here. And then, so watering, mulching, muscadine root system as per Isons in Georgia, 10 to 12 inches around the plant, more soil, it'll help protect them. Um, you can, regarding covering, you can put row covers or cardboard boxes over plants, that will work. Just make sure you take them off the next morning. Cardboard doesn't breathe as well, but it doesn't suffocate them that bad. Um, plastic, just if you don't have to, don't do it. Um, da -da -da -da, pool noodles, we talked about that. So you could put stakes in the ground, make creating a frame, talked about that, then cover them. Whatever you have at home, right? Patio chairs. You can put one on either side of your plant if they're tall enough or the plant short enough and then that can be your canopy and then secure whatever you've put on it so it doesn't flutter up. You want to try and contain what heat there is in the soil under that plant. Uh, what else? So what plants will be tropicals and sensitives? Um, bring your pots in to sheltered space if you can. Go pot to pot like I showed you. Um, you can shelter them with a tarp. Don't put the tarp on top of the plant. It, like I mentioned, the plastic won't won't do well for the plant. You'll create more harm than good. Water them in really well. Um, told you that. Drain your hoses. Okay, we will be getting some rain. It's not going to be enough. You're going to need to water in. Okay. Uh, what else? It's an insulator. Water is definitely an insulator for your plants. Um, also. The plants that are established, that's running down at the bottom there, uh, one and a half years or younger, they're the ones that are going to need protection. And tropicals, obviously, right? Uh, what else can I tell you? Uh, there's the pots information. It's going to take some work depending on how big of a space you have. Um, mine's not that large, but I have a lot <laughs> small space. I need to water in my berry plants. If you have raspberries, blueberries, any kind of berry, they need a good drink too. Mulch them in really well. Don't go up, up against the bark or the stem trunk of the plant. Uh, there's my what, whoops. What plants? Okay, I think I've covered it all. So try not to panic. I know it's hard. I know, like, you guys, it's, it's very, um, It's nerve-wracking, right? Like, I'm super attached to my plants. I want them to survive. I'm in Florida because of the opportunity that you have a longer growing season and you can plant things. Like, I'm from up north, way up north. I couldn't have Tupacina. It'd have to be a house plant, the purple one I showed you earlier. Um, and there's a lot of things online. Just think it through before you do it uh, as far as what to use that you might have in the house, cardboard boxes, um, you could take them apart and rebuild them with other cardboard boxes to make a different structure to help you. Uh, some people are taking milk jugs, the plastic, the, the, what is that, a quart or even a gallon, slice the bottom off the, where it pours, turn them upside down and put them over a plant if they'll fit. That will work. Uh, I, think, I think that's all I can tell you folks. Um, I hope you all good luck you know like I, I want you all to succeed um, I'm trying to make sure I didn't forget anything but if you guys have any questions anything that you know something and I missed it um, hey we do this in the south and it works oh you could put more leaves down pile them on the more the better right
just remember the next day in the morning when it's warm, um, the sun's coming up, take your stuff off, right? And just monitor. Um, oh, last thing before I go, you're going to get things that are going to die off. My banana leaves are going to turn brown and, and fall off. It's okay. The point of all this, keep the core, the, um, the crown, where everything starts, the growing spot uh, for your roots and your uh, top growth. Keep that warm, keep it watered in, and your plants should come back next year or after the frost and the, the, the cold. Um, if it's something like leaf lettuce, you're going to lose it if you don't cover it, right? Because it's a very small, dainty, sensitive plant that needs warm temperatures, right? They don't grow um, any kind of greens in the north this time of year. There's snow on the ground, the ground's frozen, right? So cover your stuff, water manual, mulch, uh, wait. When you lose things, you're going to, okay? I hate to say it, but 20 degrees for a long period of time, if you just do the best you can, uh, but don't cut things back right away, okay? Some stuff will look like, oh my God, it's dead. Oh man, I'm gonna lose it. Give it time, okay? Especially in the South, we're gonna warm up again and those babies will pop new growth, okay? Wait to see that it's gonna do that. If it doesn't start popping new growth, you've lost it. So hopefully that won't happen. I hope y'all can get through the freeze, keep yourselves warm, bring your pets in, please. Don't leave them outside in the cold, especially from their south. They're not used to this. They're not from uh, Minnesota or Michigan or wherever. I mean, that's a whole other story. I don't think animals should be out in the cold. But regardless, um, bring your pets in, make sure your water lines are covered up, drain your hoses when you're watering in, and uh, good luck. Please send me an email or uh, go to the YouTube page. There's lots of opportunities, ways for you to get a hold of me if you have questions, any specific plants in doubt, look up the plant online. Is Tupacina a tropical? Can it get through a frost? Uh, will Bird of Paradise get through a freeze? Will my banana tree, how do I protect it? We've got the world's biggest library right here in front of us, right? So use it to your benefit, to your advantage. Reach out to me. I'd be happy to help. And uh, good luck. Keep yourselves warm. Stay safe. Bring your pets in. And I hope you all get through this. We'll see you on the other side of it. Um, good luck. Thanks for watching. We'll talk to you soon. And I will see you um, in the future. Watch for our videos and our shorts.